All right, hello YouTube land, uh, Brent Song here again. Uh, I talked to a lady, uh, we're going to go by Michelle um, from New York. Um, I talked to her the other day and she had several interesting stories and in where we have been doing this story time, I thought I would ask her to come on and she agreed to do so. I was going to do this the other night, uh, but uh, uploading and rendering took way too long and she's been kind enough to agree to come on today. So I would like to introduce you to Michelle from New York. Hello, Michelle. Hello. All right. <laughs> and you were very, very funny the other night, too. I don't know if that's the New York kind of accent or what's going on with that, but uh, uh, New Yorkers are funny and they don't even mean to be funny. <laughs> I was, that's true. <laughs> it is. I don't know. The way you were telling, the way you were telling some of those stories were just so funny, man. It was unbelievable. But uh, you told several, you told a lot of stories, and uh, that was one of the fascinating things is that none of the stories were bad; they were all good. And um, I was thinking about uh, um, how you started off. You were talking about, uh, you know you waving from upstairs and then you went into uh, your dad driving down the road or your uncle or whoever it was, I don't remember now, but something would pull the wheel. If you could start out with those few stories and we'll kind of work our way up to the really good ones that I thought were fantastic, uh, uh, very, very interesting stories. And the doll thing, oh my goodness, that was just so crazy. <laughs> Okay, we'll start with my dad, and um, he's he's riding um, home from my house, and he always tells me that just as he's turning into his on his road, there his he's got to hang on tight to the wheel because something is always pulling him into the woods. He wants him to come right off the, into the woods. So he says, and I know I always got to pull hard the other way. And, and my father, he's little, but he's strong. And um, so when he told me that he had to actually use almost all his strength to pull away so he didn't go into the woods, I'm thinking, whatever this thing is, it's got to be powerful. So this one day he leaves, and he calls me as soon as he got home to tell me about it. But um, he, he said, just before he got to the corner where it usually pulls him in, his car dies. It just dies. So, and, and he's a mechanic, so he knows what he's doing when his car breaks down. And there was no reason he knew that his car was in mechanically good shape. Mm -hmm. uh, physically, it was, he had a little body cancer and all, but it, physically, it was in good shape. So he gets out of the car and he goes around, he opens the hood. And my brother and sister are in the back seat. And it's, it's like just starting to get dark. And we, when they're looking out into the woods, it's, it's darker in the woods. And right behind the car where he happened to, where the car died on him, is the only light that they have. So while my dad's up looking into the engine thing, um, my sister and brother are looking out into the woods. And my sister uh, says, uh, look, she says, do you see that over there? And so my brother looks and he says, yeah, what is that? So they're looking and they unroll the window a little bit and they get close to it as they can. They stick their head out and they now they're hearing this thing, which they said looked like a baby in a pink, um, with a pink towel over it. And it's calling out. To help it. It's saying, help me, help me. And um, she's saying, like, what is that? And he says, it's talking. It's got to be a baby. And <laughs> so she says, um, go get that. So he jumps out of the back seat and runs around in the front. And just as he's looking, and, and when, when he jumped out, this thing started laughing really, really loud, and it had like an evil laugh to it. 
And just as my brother's telling my father, and he's pointing in that direction, and he's saying, look over there, it's a baby. And that, when he said that, is when the, when the last started. So when my dad took like a little step over to look, this thing jumped up, and it just started running at him. And my father says, get in the car, and he slams the thing down. But before they even made it to the door to get in, it was gone. And my sister's sitting in the front seat, and she said she just, when she seen it get up, she just lambasted herself up to the, uh, the driver's door, and she forgot to shut the window. And she was scared to death. But, um, but they all seen it. They all seen it charging at him. Yeah. So, and when he got in the car, that was the only time that it didn't pull him going around the corner. And um, so when he got home, he called me, he told me about it. And I thought, okay, that's pretty interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I thought that was really strange that every time he would go around that corner, the wheel would yank like it was something pulling on it. And he knew it, so he prepares himself every time he's going around that corner, and then he happens to break down. And then that this baby thing, it, almost like it's a haunted uh, spot or something uh, with a devil baby or something. <laughs> that's, that's, it, uh, it just seemed like it wanted him, and he knew it. He said, something evil is in those woods. He says, because, he says, I, I know that there's something evil in those woods. He says, because Adam, he says, I, I drive, he says, I try to drive in the center of the road if I can, because I know it's going to pull me. And I'm using all my strength to pull away from it. And uh, he says a couple times, it took the, the steering wheel right out of my hand. Wow. And um, so he, he knew something was out there. Right. So then he, so after that, he said he didn't like going the longer way around to avoid that corner. But he said after that, he just went the longer way around. <laughs> yeah, that's why. I was going to say, why why didn't he take another route? But I guess if, if it's the longer route, you might just uh, drive down the middle of the road and deal with it every once in a while. <laughs> Man, yeah, that, the only time he ever had a problem was just that one corner. He was going around that corner. He says, I knew uh, I dread the street because I got to hang on and something's out there that wants to be. <laughs> so but he, he survived to talk about it. Right. Can, can you can you tell us the uh, the story of where um, I think this was like before you were born or something when he, uh, there was these two girls at the store that needed a ride? Oh oh yeah, that was my dad when he was a young guy. It was before he ever got married, and um, he hung around with his best friend Woody, and um, they they had an old hobby. 48 Chevy, and because he loves Chevy, and um, but it, it was an old, old car, so I don't know how old the car would have had to been for him to, you know, in it. But I know it was before they got married, and my mother would never let him go by himself with his friends. Right. So but anyway, um, they're in the car and they're driving along. They're on their way to California. So I don't know if they actually made if this was in California, but it seems like it was like just as they were getting into California. But there was this little gas station, and they stopped there, put a couple bucks in the car. And actually, I think he said he had like a dollar ten in gas for gas money. So they put the gas in, and these two girls come walking over, and they seem to appear out of nowhere. And they thought, oh, okay, here's opportunity knocking. Boy, I ain't letting this pass up. So mm -hmm. they're deciding on which one they're going to, who's going to get who. And the girls go into the store. They come out. They got this ice cream. And um, so, of course, they had to jump out there and, you know, introduce themselves and everything. And they finally talked the girls into getting into the car, and they were going to drive them home. So... And they're saying, no, it's like right around the corner. You know, we can walk down here, we can walk back. And they're like, we'll just let us drive you. And, you know, we'll talk a little bit and that's it. So they find, okay, so they get the car and they're driving around the corner. And it's like uh, 40, 50 feet from where the gas station is on the same side of the street. 
So they go around the corner, and the, the whole street is very narrow, very dark, and the trees are, like, right up to the road. And it's not paved, it's a dirt road. And so they drive up, and Dan's driving, like, oh, they're, like, strong because he wants to take a side. But the girls start yelling, well, stop here, don't get in front of the house, don't go in front of the house, the guy's going to get mad. Just don't go there. He's going, no, no, it's okay, it's okay, we'll leave. I want to bring you, well, I'll walk you right to the door so you're safe. No, no, yeah, I think I'll leave the door. And um, so she, the girls are saying, these guys will kill you. You, the, you. These guys are nothing to mess with. So he checked with his friend to make sure the gun is still in the uh, glove box and all. And um, it was. So he said, okay, then we can go up. Everything's cool. So they get right up from across the street to this house and so they're kissing on the girls and the girls are like now pushing away and saying we gotta go we gotta go before they come out we gotta go and all of a sudden they see these guys come out and some of them have torches they're picking up stones and they start throwing the stones at the car and wow. so my uh, you know get the gun get the gun the girls jump out and they're going they're telling their guys, it's okay, we're okay. Go back in the house, we're okay. And one of the guys went over, yanked the girls out of the way, and they started throwing these, these are pretty big rocks because they left dents all over the car, which my dad wasn't too happy about. But um, the girls yelled out to him. They said, there's no place to turn around if you go straight. And that's all they heard. So they jumped in the car, and he backed up going like 20 miles an hour backwards till he made it to the street. And they're laughing and thinking, wow, these guys are serious. And they were like, they got really close to the car. He said at one point, one of the guys that was like right in front, he said, like, if he would have taken another two or three steps, he could have grabbed him. That's how close they, they were getting. So they go into the store. And they go back in, into the little gas station there, and they got a soda pop, and they're just sitting there like, wow, that was really bad. And they're like, his friend is like, I think we should get out of here. What if they come over here looking for us? Said, Let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. So he said, okay, okay. So they get in the car, and they start going by, and they, they look, try to look down the way that where the house was when they passed by. They realize there's no road. All the trees are just, there's absolutely nowhere where that car would have been. Wow. And they look at each other, and they're like, you've got to be kidding. And they backed up, and maybe we missed the road. They backed up, and they went again, and they go, no, it's gone. There was, there's no road. And he says, there's got to be road. He says, well, I'm like, no, we looked at all the bumps on the car. He says, they were throwing rocks. We got, I, my, my car's all dented. So they went to the local library to see if, at first they called the police, and the police just laughed and said, ah, it happened again, go to the library. So they went to the library, and they told the women there about what happened, and asked if there was any other report. And they showed them a whole book of reports of the same girl going through the same thing, and the same men with little pointed hats coming out, and um, so they got to break their story in there, and then they went on their way. That that's incredible. And that when they when people come out of the house with torches, it's time to go. <laughs> you know what I mean? That is, I've had dreams like that that were very very scary. When I was a kid, I had a dream I think two different times with people uh, coming with torches, and of course it was dark when what have you, but. Um, yeah, that's a fascinating story that they would have a book at the library with um, sto all the, with those stories and even the police know of it and says, oh, it happens again. And they actually even have dents on their car. So they had physical evidence of this actually being true. That, that's amazing. Well, the thing was, my, my dad said that this house was so huge, he said it was, had to be like a two-story and there was a lot of, it seemed to be like uh, seven or eight windows that he could see. And um, he's thinking, he must have 15, 20 people living in this house. It was huge. It was almost the size of a barn. 
Yeah. And he said, how could they, how could they put a building that big, how could they, a building that big just disappear? And mm-hmm. his friend says, the same way the trees just grew out of nowhere and now there's no road. <laughs> But, yeah, and the trees being right up next to the road, too, that was a little suspect, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, he said when he went by, he said he, he could feel his heart giving out. He said, don't tell me that what I saw, I just didn't see. He said, yeah. that, that's unreal. So they stacked up and they did it again. And he said, if, it, if he had it went place. straight, he might not have got out of there. He was eager, but I think he was more eager to to know that he was mentally okay. That's why he called the police yeah. to, to see if there was any other reports of this. Yeah, I mean, what are the, gir- the, the, the girls? Of the library. Yeah, where are the girls? Were was little, some little town, I think it was like just as you were getting into California. Yeah, I mean, I thought it was interesting that the girls said, you know, if you go straight, there's nowhere to turn around, so they back out. If they hadn't have backed out, they might not have got out, you know? That's true. That That's that's, that's insane. I wonder how many people come up missing in that town. <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, they have to wait till that opens up, and they have to be right ready to get right. out of there. Yeah, that's that's crazy. Um, now, uh, I guess, what about the, uh, story of that doll? Um, oh, my baby doll? Yeah. <laughs> that okay, was... I was, I was little. I was probably, I don't think I was in school yet, so I was probably about four, three or four years old. And, um, it was, uh, Christmas time, and so my parents get me this, they get me and my sister the same doll. And it's a it's an all rubber doll, and it there's there was nothing really fancy about it. I think it had like a little cloth dress on it, and um, the dresses were even the same color. They were identical dolls, and um, so one day, and this was down. I think I thought it was in Florida, but I think now that I'm thinking about it, it might have been in Georgia when this happened. But anyway, we lived in this concrete house, and the the fireplace, I slept in the room where the fireplace was. And um, so everybody's going to bed, and I'm in my bed in front of the fireplace, which is up against the wall. My bed is up against the wall. And my sister walks by me, and she's holding her doll. And uh, she smiles, and she walks by. And um, I just lifted my doll up, and I said, I got one, too. And, you know, that was it. And she walked, walked, walked up. And so then an hour or so later, and I must have fallen asleep. And because when I wake up, I'm looking on the bed for my doll, and I don't see it. But then so I look on, on the floor, and there's the doll. I was like, oh, here you are. So I pick them up, pick the doll up. I put the doll in bed with me. And some of my blankets fell off. So I, I leaned down to pick my blanket up. When I picked the blanket up, I looked. On the other side of the wall was another doll. Now, you looked and underneath like, the bed, though, right? You. It was, yeah, it was on the other side of the wall. But I just picked my doll up. So I looked at the doll. And I saw it was the one by. She had her doll. So this other doll, I don't know where it came from. Yeah. So I um I moved to the other side of the bed where I saw the doll, and I and there was enough space there where I could stick my head down and look and stick my arm in there and grab it. So I did that, and I picked the doll up with two fingers. I, I picked it up by its arm with two fingers, and I walked over and I just chucked it into the fireplace, which was still burning. And within seconds. Mm-hmm. The whole house filled with smoke. And um, so... Now, when you told me this before, uh, I think one of the things that made the story interesting, too, is because you, you were saying your, that your sister was liked more than you, and both of oh, you... Oh, yeah, get, yeah, there was no doubt about it. it was, everybody knew she was spoiled. Yeah, and... She and, didn't want to do something. She said, I don't feel good. And my mother would say, well, honey, go lay down. Your sister can do it. And then she'd say, Michelle, come over here and do this. She don't feel good. 
Yeah, and, and it was like the, the whole life. It was like I was her maid servant. So, so, so when, um, so when you when you you woke up and your doll was gone, you pick your you pick your doll up. But you know your sister's got her doll already. Because, but then when you yeah, see this other I doll, you said doll. you said that so, doll. I, I had my doll in bed with me. So this other third doll, I don't know where it came from. So I picked it up very carefully. And I walked it over to the fireplace and I just chucked it in. And the whole house filled with smoke. And <laughs> so, and when it did that, I started crying, you know, screaming, Dad, Dad. And my father comes running out and he sees the whole room is all full of smoke. And he's going, what happened? What happened? And um, he's pushing the smoke away from the fireplace so he can see what, what's in there burning. And I said, I threw a doll in there. He said, why did you throw your doll in there? He says, I can't afford to get you another doll. I said, no, it's not my doll. I don't know where it is, but I, it's not mine. And Linda's got her doll. So she said, he said, okay. So he goes and gets a bucket. Uh, it was a, actually a, like an old milk pail. And he gets a stick and he throws the doll in there. And he runs it outside, and it's smoldering, and he opens the door and a couple windows, and he's getting the smoke out. And um, so he, and then after he got the house all out of smoke, there, he comes over, and he's just like, why would you do that? He says, you know, I can't get another doll. Why would you throw your doll? I said, no, look, look, Dad, and I showed him. Here's my doll. He's okay, that was your sister's doll, then. He says, now you know that your mother is going to make you give your doll to her. And I said, no, she's got her doll. I saw her. He said, I'm going to go see. So he went out there. He went up to her room, I guess, and he looked, and she had her doll. And he came back down. He says, well, what was that that I just took out? I said, I don't know. I don't know. It's like the devil doll. <laughs> I, said, I don't know where it came from, but I knew there was only two. And me and my sister had one, and there was no more. And all of a sudden, this one here was on the floor by my bed. So he says, well, I'm going to go check. So he walks out there, and there's nothing in the bucket. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, because when you told me that story, you said you looked under the doll, and you said, that must be a devil doll, because you knew that your yeah, sister. Yeah, that's what I thought when I first seen it. I said, that must be a devil doll. Because my, so... my father always would tell us, you know, if you... Disobey your parents, the devil's going to get you. Because that's one thing God will not tolerate is disobedience. Yeah. And the devil's going to get you. And he's always telling us how the devil can trick us into doing and seeing things that aren't there and all that's there. So um, I was brought up on that. So when I seen this strange doll that shouldn't be there, I'm thinking, this has to be the devil doll. <laughs> there, so, but it's not there. So, so you just pick it up and toss it in the fire, man. That's that's. And, that. and, but, and it burnt because it smoked everything out. It was a rubber dial. It was smoked. Yeah. And so, I mean, within minutes, the whole where I was was all black smoke. So what did he say whenever he went back out to that bucket after he seen both of you really did have your dolls and the doll was gone? What did, what did he say about that? Do you remember? Well, he, he, that's when he said he was going to go check the bucket. And he, he went out and he looked. He says, I have something must have carried it off. He says, it's not in the, it's not in the bucket no more. And uh, so then he goes and gets my brother and he says, um, go around there and see if there's any... Um, dog footprints or anything like that. And then he went out and they had their flashlights and looked and they didn't see no dog prints that could have came and got it and carried it up. And he don't know how they would have carried it. He said that thing was, it was, it was, a, it was on fire. It was hot. It would have never been able to pick it up. Yeah. But yeah. it's gone. <clears throat> That's pretty, so, pretty wild story. Mystery of the devil, though. I don't know what it was then and I still don't know what it is today. Yeah. I don't know what it was, and I don't know where it went. I have no idea. But that's all I know is I get rid of it. Yeah, that, that's that's crazy. Uh, um, I was trying to look and see what other stories you told me that night. Um, uh, the baby... Blanket. The dragon. We were going to talk about the dragon. Yeah, I know. I was going to save that story for last. That's, that's an oh. incredible story. 
Now you talked about uh, that there. Uh, you had that little kid that would uh, that got real real scared of you, and um, and there was someone like waving from upstairs in some apartment. And you oh were, like, yeah, I lived in this haunted house in the city in New York, and um, things were always happening there, and I always kind of like made excuses for the things that would happen, and so. Um, one, and my, my one sister came over one day and she says, did you know that at the side of your cupboard here, you have a little man that's imprinted right into the wood? And I said, get out of here. She goes, no, look, really. She goes, it looks like a little elf guy. has got a little pointed hat. And I went over and I looked at it and I said, oh my gosh. Now, every time I passed by here, and it went from the kitchen into the living room, and every time I passed by here, I'm going to run through here because now this thing is going to scare the chicken out of me. <laughs> so, um, she was coming over because my mother was out of town, so she was going to stay with us for a couple nights until my mother got back. And, um, so I was going to put her in one room, and my husband wanted to put her in a different room. And, um, so we were in another room discussing it, and then I hear her calling. And I says, uh, okay, let's go back out there and we'll talk about it later. So I walked out and her face was like all puffed out where her eyes, you couldn't hardly see her eyes. They were, she was just all puffed out. So um, she says, have, have you been calling me? And I says, three times? And she goes, oh, good, it was you. And I says, no, I, I only hear the same thing as somebody calling me three times. And she goes, oh, don't tell me that. She said, Even if it's not true, she said, don't tell me that. And um, then she she told me it sounded like it was coming from the bathroom, and but it was like right in her ear. But she felt like whatever this was was coming from the bathroom, and which was just off from where she was. And um, so my cousins were staying with us for a while and they were in the one bedroom and that's why I didn't want to put her in the fire bedroom because that was more like a closet and she would have had gone through their room to get over there and um so my cousin um gets up and she um oh what's that oh Mary uh Frank and Mary were um, staying with us, with my cousin. And um, so Mary gets up and she sees, you know, what happened to her face. And she's like, oh my gosh. She runs back in the room. She just said, she was a Bible reader. She was, she just stayed in there the whole rest of the day just reading her Bible. And um, so we went out for a while and. Then we, and we were only out for a little while and we came back and, but her face seemed to clear up like right after we left. And then we came back and we were, so she was afraid to be in any room by herself. So we put the bed, um, we had a full size bed. We put it in front of the TV right up close so I could turn it off with my toe. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we let her sleep in the middle because she didn't want to sleep. She was afraid something was going to grab her. So we said, okay, you can sleep here. Then I had my husband on one side and she was in the middle. She was little. She was like 10, 11 years old. And um, so all night long, we hear camping at the window, at, at the living room window where we were. And um, all night. And it, 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 it slows down a little bit. Then it gets really at some point we think that tree is going to break the window it's hitting so hard then it'll slow down a little bit but it went all night and um and, and she it's straight up front and it's this branches are hitting out a window it's no big deal so okay so the next day um and it just so happened that my dad was, I didn't even know he was there, 
but he was out front and he had um, his, my brother and sister with him. They, they were, they're like half brother and sister because he was married and they got a divorce. And, but these kids were always with him. And, um, and then I find out that uh, my husband's sister's down there, the, the two of his sisters are down there. And he's telling them stories and things. So, and so when I opened the door, I'm like, wow, well, everybody's here. Okay. So, um, Adia says, well, I'm just going to come up and have coffee. I said, no, 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 we're not having coffee here. <laughs> and uh, I hated being in the place because it was just so bad. And um, so I ran, and that's where we went when I went, I went to my in-law's house. We had coffee. I had to coffee on my shirt. So I said, let me run off and change my shirt, and um, then we can go off and coffee somewhere else. So I says to my um, sister-in-law, I said, Bonnie, come on up with me. I knew my sister wasn't coming up with me. <laughs> I said, Bonnie, come on up with me. So I hear her say, okay. I hear her walking up the steps right behind me. I go in, I grab a shirt, I put the shirt on, and then I realize it doesn't go with the pants I put on, which really mattered to, mattered to me back then. And, um, I had boots on, so I had to take my boots off to change my pants. So I had to lean over the bed a little bit, kick my boots off, and while I was leaning on the bed, I could feel two hands on my back, and it just pushed me real hard out of the bed. Bang! And I'm like, Bonnie, stop it! I just stopped goofing off. So I get up, and I kind of turn around, she's not there. And so I go back into my little closet room and grab some pants and put my pants on, put my boots on. And while I'm in there changing my clothes, I hear her running around the table. And it's like she's, first she's walking and you hear the creak, 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 creak. And then she's running. And I'm like, I didn't know she had that much energy. <laughs> and I just laughed about it. <laughs> so I come out and I'm going down the, and I look around and I'm like, all right, Bonnie, I'm done. I'm going back down. So I head down the stairs and there's Bonnie sitting at the bottom of the stairs. And I says, Bonnie, didn't you even come up with me? She says, no, I told you no. And I said, listen, I said, when I said come up with me, I heard you or something follow me up the stairs. I said, and when I was up there, something pushed me on the bed. I said, so even if it wasn't you, tell me it was you. <laughs> she goes, it wasn't me. And they all said, no, she hasn't even moved. I'm like, oh, okay. So then they went. My, my two sister-in-laws went one way. They went home to their, their house. And so I was going to go with my father. His truck, for some reason, was parked across the street. So he tells my little sister, who was probably seven, six or seven, take her hand and walk across the street, get in the truck. So she grabs her hand. We start walking across. And she turns around. Dad said something. And so she turned around to see what he's talking about. And she must have looked up in my window, but I didn't, I didn't see nothing. I didn't turn around. So she pulls her hand away from me and she goes and grabs out of his leg. And she says, she's evil. She's the devil. I don't want to, I don't want to touch her. I don't want to talk to her. I'm like, <laughs> what is going on? What are you doing? What's the matter? And she is now hiding behind my father. And she will not let me get near her. She just screams. So we get in the car, the truck, and we went and had coffee at some restaurant. And um, years later, years later, like, like, I'm like 64 now, and this was like maybe 10 years ago, I finally talked to her, and she told me, that when she turned around to see what Dad was talking about, she happened to look up in my kitchen window, and I was waving goodbye to her from the kitchen window, going from one window to the other. She said she waved real, I waved real quick, and then I just appeared in the other kitchen window, waving goodbye to her. Wow. And um, I don't know. It wasn't me. It wasn't <laughs> yeah. me. Wow. So that she she just freaked out and thought 
Well, I guess if you was waving from one window and then appear in the other window, she probably thinks, well, this might not even be her. <laughs> if it's some appearing person. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a pretty crazy story. Like me, I had real long hair, and I moved my hair. But my sister, my sister, um, the one that was stayed with me that night, she had the same experience. I would never stay alone in the house, no. and I used to go downstairs to my neighbors as soon as my husband left for work. But then I got in a fight with them over the laundry, and um, so then I would have my husband drop me off at my in-laws. And then he was picking me up on his way home. But, so this one day, I'm there, and it was, like, nighttime. And it was in, like, the dead of winter. And um, we're sitting there playing cards, and there's a knock on the door. And so I go over, I answer the door, and my sister's standing there with the, na the downside, downstairs neighbor, my downstairs neighbor, who I'm not even talking to. And he says, how did you get here so quick? I'm like, what are you talking about? He says, well, she was outside, and she kept telling you to unlock the bottom door, and you kept waving her up to come up, and then and you went from one window to the other window, and you kept, like, motioning for her, come on up, come on up. And But she was making the gesture that I had to unlock the door. And... Um, she said, and she knocked on my door, and I saw you. He said, I saw you go from one window to the other, and you keep motioning for us to come up. And so I, the only thing I knew is that maybe you and Chuck had a fight, and that um, maybe he was over there, and I was going to drop her off over here to you, or to him, because I knew you were home. And I said, no. I said, that's why I'm never home when he's not there because things like this happen all the time. So. So you were glad to move away from there, right? Oh, yeah. I was there. They said I was the, the only one that's been. I was there for a year and a half. And they said I, I've been the longest one to ever stay there. Wow. <laughs> so I guess that a lot of people had uh, moved out pretty quick because of that, huh? <laughs> well, you know, my friends and stuff would say, oh, we went by your house the other day. You must change your kitchen curtains every day. I said, no, I don't, actually. I, said, I may change them twice a year. And they said, every time we go by your house, you one day you had purple curtains up, and the, like 15 minutes later, you had yellow curtains. And we're, make, we're always making a joke about it, like, this must be how you spend your day, just changing your kitchen curtains. What? I'm like, no, I don't at all. <laughs> that is crazy. Yeah, that's what I do is stay home and change my kitchen curtains. But <laughs> um, I, I used to go by there to see if I would experience the same thing with whoever was living there to see if their curtains seemed to change. And they did. I, w I went by like three times, maybe a week or two apart from each other. And every time I went, they were different. And I, the last time I went, they hit, everybody was outside, it was in the summer, and I asked the lady how long she'd been there, and she said it was just a couple months, and I said, did you ever have anything freaky happen? And she says, no, I'm not even into that. She says, We're, I wasn't into it either, it just happened. And... um she says, oh, you must be into, like, witchcraft and stuff. I says, no, actually, I'm not. I says, but um, I, says, I was just wondering if you had any strange occurrences. And she says, no. And, like, two or three days after that, I, we drive down again, and the house was burnt down. Wow. Huh. Wow. But this this thing, and this was, downstairs didn't have a problem at all. But this thing, these spirits, um, were in the air. So they are, it says in the Bible, they are the, the prince of the air, the evil spirits. Mm -hmm. are The prince of the air. And these things were there. I guess that's, that's where they claimed their space. And somebody built a house over them and trapped them in. 
And I imagine, I don't know if they ever rebuilt or whatever, but if they do, I imagine that they're going to have the same problem because they're going to just enclose the same space again. Yeah, there was something odd about the upstairs apartment to, if it wasn't going on anywhere else and everybody had moved in and you get drive by know, later and the curtains change. Like right across the street, the house that was there years ago when my parents were, well, my grandmother lived not too far from there and she knew the woman that lived there and the woman was having an affair and her husband and the husband came home and caught her lover there and chopped both of their heads off. In that apartment? In the apartment right across the street from there. Oh, okay. And and then right around the corner from there, there was, Danielle, come and get this dog. And then right around the corner, there was a uh, old lady living there. She must have been 80 years old. And we lived just up the street, and this was like years later, we lived uh, right on the back side of that. And my mother used to take her down food and gifts for Christmas and stuff. And so she was, she had all these um, mediums and spiritualists and stuff that used to come over. And her house was like so haunted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I, I went there once. And my mother wanted me to bring her down these Christmas presents she got in her. And um, I stood next to the door, and it, I, I couldn't, I, I, I'm like, and she's like, oh, come on in, and we'll have tea, and Mickey's here, and the Indians won't leave Donald alone, and she's just going on. I'm thinking, oh, this lady's great. Then doors started shutting, and windows started opening and closing, and doors are slamming, and I'm like, no, really, I just wanted to drop these things off and wish you a Merry Christmas. <laughs> and I got to get back home right now. Right now. <laughs> She's like, oh, okay. So I left. Yeah. So that was just, you know, that was in the little area. But I don't know if these evil spirits or whatever can all join together if they're all their own little entities causing chaos in the world. Well, I, I, they, I think they all serve one one master. Uh, Jesus said that uh, Satan's king's, kingdom is not divided. Um, can, all right, I would like for you to now um, tell us about the, uh, the dragon thing. That was the one story that uh, you had commented about and it, it was so fascinating uh, to me. And then when I heard you tell the story, oh my goodness, that's that's in, just insane. Um, and and uh, kind of uh, take us through that story and give us every detail you can think of. And then also about when you ask your sister about it later, way down the, uh, 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 later in life, if you would. Okay. So anyway, my, we had this, my mother has this rule. If she catches you yawning, you go to bed. You must be tired. So I see my sister, the spoiled one. I see her yawning, and I didn't make her go upstairs. But so I tried to hide my yawn, but she caught me, and she sent me upstairs. So my sister Ruth says, well, you can't send her up there by herself. It's, you know, it's not right. So she said, I'll go up with her. So she comes up with me, and we're, there's two beds. There's one bed that's against the wall. It's, well, it's not against the wall, but it's up near the wall on the other side of the room. My bed, which is a twin bed, is right next to the door because the only light we had was the hall light. So she gets this, um, the old Sears catalog. I'm sure everybody's familiar with that. Mm -hmm. um, and she had cut out of cardboard um, these paper dolls, and we're finding clothes, and she was cutting them out and gluing them together so that they would fit these dolls she made. Mm -hmm. And so she says, she's telling me, go ahead and look through the book and see if you see anything, you know, anything you like, and we'll, you know, try to fit it to the doll. So, okay. So I'm sitting there just th thumbing through the thing, and oh, that's pretty, that's pretty, we're talking, and it's, you know, everything's okay. 
And then all of a sudden, I asked her about something, and she don't look, answer me. So I look up, and I see her just staring over my shoulder. And I'm like, Lou, don't do that. What are you doing? Don't do that. You're scaring me. And it looked like she had seen a ghost. And her mouth was just dropped open, and she was just froze, holding her scissors in her hand, and she was just looked like, frozen. So I turned around to look to see what she's seeing and I see this huge red dragon and it's standing behind the other bed between the window and the bed and it is huge. The head on it was the size of one of the very large tires and it had these little horns and they, they you would think that you know, if there was horns, they'd have be massive or something. But they weren't. They were just little horns. That, and and the, the teeth were so, there were so many, and they were, like, very sharp. And they were, it was drooling on the bed. And the tail came around the bed to the other side of the bed. It came from behind the bed where the dragon was. And it, the tail was almost touching the other leg on the floor. It was just massive. And the head had to turn, and it was inches away from the ceiling. But it couldn't, it couldn't possibly have lifted its head right up, or it would have went right through the ceiling. It, and it was, it was huge, and it was, it was all red, and it had like these black lines through it, like shadow lines. Mm-hmm. And the eyes were really small, but they, it, it seemed like it just, they just pierced straight through you. And when I seen this thing, I, at first I just looked at the whole size of it. And then I just opened my mouth and I just screamed. It was like, um, I didn't even know I could scream that loud. But I did. And when I first screamed, I even scared me in the scream. But, and I, I just, it was just like one long, steady scream. And with that, I hear people racing up the, the stairs. And um, I he- then I hear my dad, and as soon as he put his foot in front of the door, and I turned away just as he, I, it was getting, he was getting closer to the door, and the thing had disappeared. So I looked back, and it was gone. And he came in, and he snatched up my sister and took her, brought her back downstairs. And now I'm so scared. I'm still sitting on this bed. I'm thinking this thing now knows I'm alone. It's going to come and get me. And so I just close my eyes and I'm just praying in my head. God protect me. Put your precious blood over me. Don't let this thing come back and get me. And so I'm just sitting there praying in my head. And then my brother comes back up and gets me and brings me back down. So we never talked about it. Nobody ever mentioned it. Well, after we got back downstairs, my, my father got a couple flashlights. They went upstairs, and we told them what we saw. We both saw the same thing. And um, the, they looked for the flashlight. They, they looked out the window. They looked under the bed. They looked in the closet. Every, they didn't see nothing. And um, But after that day, we never talked about it. It was just something that you just... There was no need to talk about it. It was just craziness. And uh, so years later, like this was uh, maybe five, ten years ago, and this happened back when I was like seven. So mm-hmm. now I'm 64. So like five years ago, I go down to where they live and my two sisters, and I visit this sister who is um, living in another state. And I said to her, do you remember when, when we were uh, cutting out dolls from this year's catalog? And she goes, oh, yeah. She goes, wasn't that scary? Well, who? It's all, and then she said, well, you want coffee? And that was it. That's all she would say. She didn't want to even talk about it. No, she, you, when you told me that before, you said, oh, the red dragon. Wasn't that a hoot or something like that? She, yeah, yeah. She, she mentioned the red dragon. She was, oh, the red dragon. Yeah, wasn't that a hoot? That's all she would say. I said, but wait a minute. Can, can we discuss this for a minute? I said, so it really did happen. <laughs> she goes, okay. She goes, 
Uh, do you want sugar with your coffee? She wouldn't talk about it. That's it. That that was the end of the conversation with her. Wow, that's and, amazing. Um, you know, I, I you commented on the video where me and my sister had uh, um, where that that red devil thing came out of the wa wall and grabbed me, and my sister walked in on it. And then I had said in that story that me we never talked about it until I was thirty two years old, and it happened when I was five. And then I yeah. said, "Do you remember when we?" And she said, "Oh, like it was yesterday." Her and I discussed it. Um, so when, when you told me that your your sister said, "Oh, the red dragon wasn't that crazy, or wasn't that a food?" <laughs> and then want some coffee? <laughs> that's yeah. that's incredible. That was the end of that. Yeah. I'm like, wait a minute, can we talk about this? And she says, "There's nothing to discuss." She says, "You know, it happened. Uh, we think it happened." I go, "Wait a minute." I says. Didn't Dad come up and grab you and leave me there? And she says, look, do you want to have your coffee inside or outside? <laughs> yeah. She wouldn't talk about it. Yeah. So so when you looked over there and you saw this, was it was a dragon um, like a typical dinosaur-looking type thing with, with four feet on the ground? It looked almost like a dinosaur that had like a round mouth on it. And the, everything was like rounded. It was. It didn't have the spikes on the back. And it was like, you know, Dino on the Flintstones. It yeah. looked almost like that, but it wasn't purple and it didn't have those big spots. And but it was just red and it was it had these little horns. And they they went down and they kind of curled up. Hmm. I mean that that's incredible. Um. And then you said it had like a a, a lot of teeth. It had a lot of sharp teeth. Now, now, it was when, almost like it was smiling, you know. It was just, yeah, it was so fierce looking. Now, when you described the color of it, um, it made me think of, about my encounter where the thing was red, and then I was trying to describe in the video of where it seemed like seemed like light um, emanated from within it because the only thing I can uh, just you know say if you wanted to see kind of what it looked like is put your hand on a flashlight at night in the dark and it makes your hand glow red and then around the cuticles uh, it makes the cuticles look black and the creases in your finger look black so when you were saying it was red with these black lines in it it almost sounds kind of like the lines must have been wrinkles or creases in it or the scales or or something like that did it emanate like a uh seem almost have a glow to it or it was just red no no no, no not at all the, the picture that was um there with the, the fingers and as yeah. soon as i seen the color on that it, it just brought the, the picture of that dragon right in my head because it was the same thing it was the same it was almost like it was outlined in black and then, like, black shadows and stuff through it. And, yeah. um, yeah. it was just enormous. Yeah, yeah, I, I know that there's a story that, uh, um, of, of someone who, uh, that I, I, well, I listened to the story, I don't know the person, but, um, he had a near-death experience. He accidentally, they were playing around on a marine barracks, and he, uh, they put a rope around his neck and he actually ended up hanging himself on accident and he came out of his body and he ended up going um uh, you know to in the other dimension he was in this outer darkness but this devil thing ended up grabbing him and he said when he looked at the uh thing um he said it, it was like uh he could see like black kind of like shadow something or another like going underneath the skin so when you're describing that, it's kind of what I picture, but you you pretty much are saying it looked like that picture that I drew in that video. Yeah. But you know what? Can I tell you one more story? Yeah, certainly. And, uh, do we have time? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, back when I was like 15, one of the times when my mother threw me out of the house, <laughs> um, yeah. I went to live with my aunt. And, um, 
I was like her slave, you know? It was like, okay, and, and anytime, any, and she had like 11 kids. So, and if anybody came over, the first thing she did was put something on to eat, you know? So I was like constantly doing dishes. And um, so this one day, I'm sleeping. It was probably 7, 8 o'clock in the morning. And she comes in and wakes me up and says, somebody's here to see you. I'm thinking it's got to be somebody from my family. Who else would care, you know? So I go out and she tells me, sit down at the table. This lady's coming in. She wants to talk to you. I'm like, okay, maybe it's somebody from the school because I'm going to have to start school there. So I'm sitting there and here comes this little old lady who's probably in her 80s. And probably 90s. She was really old. She walked very slow. And she introduced herself as Mrs. Green. And she sat down and she hid this calendar, this calendar with um, green beans, string beans in it. And she asked me to help snip her beans. And I'm like, sure, okay. So I washed my hands and I went over and started snipping beans with her. And she says, listen, she's, I got to tell you something. She says, last night, she says, God told me today I had to come and talk to you. She says, now, when I was a young girl, I had um, I had gotten married, we've been married about a year, and I was uh, in a bad car accident, and I was, uh, they brought me into the hospital, and they pronounced me dead. And I was up above my body watching this whole thing as they pronounced me dead. They put the sheet over me, and as soon as the sheet before of the thing, and then they brought me down to the morgue, and my body kind of shot right back down to the morgue. I did not want to leave. And um, she says, and so and my body just eased up, and there was a shelf in the morgue, and on top of the shelf is this red mitt, and under the bed, I could see right through the bed, under the bed, there was a, a gold pen, and I thought, that was really strange, that I could see through the bed, and um and then with that, she was gone. She, her body just shot up out of the air. And uh, she said when she got to where she was going, and she went through the whole tunnel thing, and when she came out, she saw grass. And she saw people, but they were standing off in a distance, and they were just waving to her. And um, so she started walking towards them. But then she says this man approached her, he says, and I, I knew immediately that this was Jesus. And he said to me, you can't stay. You can't stay. You've got to go back. And I'm telling him, oh, no, I don't want to. And he says, no, no, listen, you've got to go back. You're you're going to have a baby girl. And, and then years, you know, a couple of years after that, you're going to have a boy. And you've got to be there for your children. You've got to go back. But I wanted to tell you something. And she says, listen, no matter what you tell me, I'm not going nowhere. He says, no, no, he says, I'm giving you a job. He says, there's certain people on earth that you have to talk to. And um, when that tour is done, I'm, I'm bringing you back home. So, and she's begging him that she don't want to leave. And um, he, he's saying, it's going to be okay. He says, just. Talk to the, and she says, who are they? Well, give me names. How many are there? And he says, just do as I ask you to do. He says, and, and I'll bring you right back as soon as you're done. And she and, and just the twinkle in her eye, she was back in her body. And um, and it was like she didn't go through no tunnel, no nothing. And it just clicked and she's back. And when she opened her eyes, they have a they still have the sheet over her. And there's a guy standing there. And, um, well, there's two guys. There's one on either side of her. 
and they are um, writing on this, uh, this piece of paper on a clipboard. And um, the guy says, you know, I lost my pen. I don't know where my pen is. He says, it's a, a gold pen. He says, my father gave it to me when I graduated medical school. He said, I, I lost the pen. I don't know where it is. And she said, it's under the bed. And when she said that, they both almost had a heart attack. They, left. they looked at each other to see if each other had said it. And they pulled the blanket, the sheet out, and she's got her eyes open, and she's saying, it's under the bed. He says, look under the bed. And he bends over, and he sees the bed. And um, <laughs> so he couldn't believe it. He, he couldn't believe it. He says, oh, my God, she, she's okay. So he, they take her out of there, and they put her back up into a room, and the husband and everybody is still there. And they they tell him, look, I, we don't know what happened. She just starts talking, and she's back. And, um, and she had a collapsed lung, and she had just broken, like, a... a a toe or something. So they were able to fix those problems. And um, so the nurse is, and it must have been wintertime, because this nurse is, is saying that one of these days, I'm, I got to go fi- buy me some more mints. She says, it's winter out now. I lost my, my other mint last winter, and I have no idea where it is. And she was happened to be in the room right across from the hall, and she heard this. And she says, "Ma'am, come here, come here." She calls her in. She said, "Listen." She says, "You're you got a red mitten missing?" She says, "Yeah." She says, "It's up on the top shelf down in the morgue." And she goes, "What?" She goes, "I'm telling you that I saw a red mitten up there." And um. So she sends one of the guys to go down and look for this red mitten. And sure enough, he brings it down and he gives it to her. So uh, it was only like, she was only there for like two or three days. And she went home. And she lived her life. And every time she'd meet somebody, she would tell them about her experience. She says, and Jesus told me, I have to talk to people. But I don't know who they are. And I don't know how many there are. So... Every time I have the chance to talk to somebody, I got to take the chance that maybe their name is on that list that Jesus gave, you know, has for me. So, and she's telling me this story. She says, I don't know how much longer the Lord's going to make me go on with this. She's, I'm an old woman. I've raised my kids. He told me I had to be here to raise my kids. Well, I raised my kids. I, I've seen all my grandchildren grow up and go off and have their life. And I'm still waiting for them to call me home. And uh, so she says, and when I found out that you were here, um, the Lord woke me up this morning, told me I uh, told me I had to be here to talk to you. So that's why I'm here. And I got to tell you that you must be on the list because he woke me up and told me, get up and get dressed and go over there. And so now I'm telling you, this is the story. There's life after death that he, there, there's definitely a heaven. And we're all going home. If you're good and you obey his laws, you're all going home someday. And I was so moved by it. I was, I was like in tears by the time she got done. Mm-hmm. And, um, so she picked up her beans and she walked out the door and that was it. And Aunt Mill, uh, my Aunt Millie, she said, now, why wouldn't she come over? She said, she didn't even tell me the story. She, I, she said, I knew nothing about it. Why wouldn't she come over and talk to me? I said, I don't know. I don't know. I said, but that's, it's nice to know that I have a place to go that somebody actually wants me. Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, that's a pretty, that's a good story there for sure. That that's amazing. Uh, and, that, and so, the, and my uncle <clears throat> built most of the homes in the area where they live, and um, so he says um, 
my aunt tells him, go over and uh, ask her to come over for coffee. She was really bothered that she didn't come over to talk, tell, tell her the story. So mm -hmm. she says, go over and invite her over for some coffee this morning. So my uncle goes over there and he's knocking on the door, knocking on the door, no answer. So he goes into her back door, which she knew she always left open, and he finds her sitting at the table with the string beans still at the table. She's, she died. She must have just got home and put the beans on the thing, and she died right there. So I was the last person. Wow. That's I was incredible. the last person out of the list. Well, that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, Michelle, I really thank you for sharing that. That's an awesome way to end this uh, episode of Mysteries to Search. Um, the Lord works in mysterious ways. He sure does. Yeah. So if you're on the list, that's good news. <laughs> you know? I'm out of here. That's right. It's good to be on Jesus' list. That's for sure. So I, I think that that's a good place to end this, Michelle. Uh, you hang on the line there, and I'm going to go ahead and, and end the show. Um, okay. You all, uh, everybody out there in YouTube land, that that uh, that's a series of very progressive stories and ending with a very uh, awesome story, uh, uh, The Mystery of Salvation. That's, that's, uh, that's a mystery for sure. Uh, but it's a mystery that we can all know if you put your trust in Jesus and uh, if you believe that he's uh, that Jesus is son of God and confess with your mouth that he is Lord and you believe that he was raised from the dead. The Bible says that you shall be saved. That's a mystery that we can certainly know the answers to. And uh, you can spend your life searching that mystery out. And it sounds like the woman that uh, that uh, that she met there. Uh, certainly had a good calling on her life and and she she was wondering what what this list was all about and the only one that got to know about that list for sure was the, that there was one person that, that was the last one on that list and and that happens to be our guest here tonight that's that's a pretty cool story so i ask that you all share these videos subscribe like the videos and comment and i will see you on the next video. God bless. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye.